Hey, welcome to this time-lapse video. We're going to be working on my Hogwarts 3D model. We're going to be taking it from looking something like this at the beginning to looking a little bit more like this. So we'll be working on that transept area at the bottom as well as the central tower up uh, toward the top. Uh, this is going to be playing at about five, or no, I'm not about, exactly five times full speed, so uh, it's going to look like I'm working real quickly. Uh, don't believe it, I'm not that good. Uh, here we go, I'm working first on this window, and you can see I've got Photoshop open in the background, and Blender 2.831, 2.832, whatever the latest version is as of today, <laughs> uh, in, the, in the foreground where I'm doing my actual modeling. This window happens to be based very closely off of a real window at Durham Cathedral, which this section of Hogwarts is based off of. And the reference image that I have open in the background there, get a glimpse there as I zoom in, uh, that is uh, a photo of, of the miniature uh, of Hogwarts that now sits at the, uh, the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in, in London, near London. Uh, so I've got that on a, a reference board in Photoshop along with a bunch of other images both from the films and from the studio tour and, and from a few other things. So you'll see me very frequently going back to that uh, that reference board to move around and take a look at different images, but uh, right now I've got a nice reference image of that window that I can just leave open as I start working on the, the tracery there. Uh, pretty simple modeling techniques here. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this so it'll be interesting both to fellow blender heads and those who are not. Uh, what I'm doing there is I've been trying to figure out um, what sort of radius to use for this because I had a at a radius that I had already used for creating the arch on the outside and now I needed to do the same thing for the tracery on the inside and then uh, mirror it. And you can see it they intersect. You can see the orange line is sort of an, uh, an x-ray view of it there, and you can see even better there. Um, so I'm, I'm going outside the lines here. Sometimes I'm a little bit more careful about that, and I'll actually uh, cut things off, but in this case the tracery is just going to go right into the walls. It's not going to be visible, uh, and it's not going to be doing any sort of weird uh, overlapping planes that might render with artifacts or anything. This is all pretty... Um, pretty easy for, for Blender to render, even though there will be some, some overlaps that wouldn't technically be physically possible. And you can even see there, it's starting to look, look a little bit like the real thing. Similarly, down at the bottom, I'm going to add the, the bottom of the tracery using that exact same profile I've created. Um, could just as easily do this using Blender's curves feature, where you're using um, Bezier curves that have uh, control points and are of infinite resolution. Um, could do that, in, and sometimes I do do that. In this case, I'm just going ahead and and building things with with polys from the from the start. Uh, when I'm putting these things together, the ideal is to have a, a blueprint to work from, a, a technical drawing. In this case, it would be uh, an elevation or, or possibly multiple elevations, some some sections to work with. Uh, in this case, I do have one of the actual window at Durham Cathedral, but in this case it's not high resolution enough to be really particularly useful. So I'm pretty much eyeballing it at this point, although the overall dimensions that I'm working with have been taken directly from a mixture of blueprints and also some photogrammetry. And if you're not aware, photogrammetry is uh, a technique where you use multiple images of the same object from different angles, and then the computer is able to figure out uh, a 3D model that fits the available data for you. And, and usually the results, at least with the sort of images that I'm working from, usually the results are not particularly precise, but they are pretty accurate. And, uh, and they do give you some, some useful information that, that can be a little bit harder to figure out just by eyeballing it from a photo alone. So locally, most of these things should be pretty close to scale within, within a few inches. And the model as a whole is, is also quite close to scale. Um, in certain sections, I have it down to the, down to the inches uh, because some of the, the technical drawings uh, out there uh, 
actually include the exact measurements. So those are always nice when I have them. But in this case, I don't. I'm just going for something that is close enough to where you wouldn't be able to spot the differences unless you were really closely comparing uh, a photo side by side with the model. One thing that I am making the conscious choice to simplify is you can see if you look at the reference photo on the left um, that a lot all this tracery has a complex profile to it um, and I'm using just a flat surface for some of these areas like the one I'm working on right now. The, the major curves, the thicker ones, I, I gave them that more complicated profile, but here I'm just creating flat surfaces that have the right sort of cookie cutter cutout sort of look. Uh, I found that at the distances that I'm usually rendering this model from, it looks about the same. And Hogwarts has so many windows that I'm hesitant to bog my computer down any more than I already have uh, in terms of the number of number of polygons, number of polys. Uh, because the, the more of those that you have, the more detail you have, the more computing resources it's going to eat up. And I did just double from 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM finally, uh, but you'll still see that there's a, a lot of times during this video, and even sped up, you'll see it just pause for a moment as, as Blender hangs. But uh, fortunately, it's not crashing on me. It's just even there for a, a split second, you saw it... Uh, froze up for a moment at, at random times, but it usually recovers pretty well. Just got to wait for it. Anyway, here I'm doing some more mirroring and trying to get this all to be decently close to symmetrical, filling in all the different pieces. I'm just doing lots of tracery. This project, there's been a lot of this gothic sort of tracery to do, all sorts of different styles. Anytime that I possibly can, I reuse elements. Uh, it's always great to be able to, to duplicate an asset and, and use it for multiple sections, and you'll see that later in this video. Uh, but in this case, this particular window design, haven't run across it anywhere else in, in the project so far. Uh, I am going to be able to reuse this asset for the other side of the castle, or, or this part of the asset at least, um, because the uh, the other transept, uh, or at least it, it's the equivalent of, of the transepts at, uh, at Durham Cathedral, uh, the one opposite it has the same window, and then there's actually another one on the, the far side of that that uses the same window too. So uh, you're not going to see that in this video, but in the future I'll be able to duplicate this on the other side. Uh, one thing I should mention if, uh, if anyone's confused about why Hogwarts is just gray, especially if you've been following my blog, uh, I do have most of the materials, most of the textures turned off when I'm in this particular view. I find that it slows things way down to have all of those uh, all those materials visible. So for the most part, I just keep them real simple. And then when I need to, I switch over to uh, a nice fully rendered view using Blender's Cycles render engine. Right now what I'm using is the EV render engine, which you may have seen in my moving staircases video. This is the same thing as that. It's just that this model I've built for ultimate viewing with, with cycles. And we'll, we'll round out the very end of this video with, with a cycles render of, of all of today's work. Uh, as I said, this video is sped up to five times normal speed, 500%. So the video takes a little under an hour. It's actually uh, about five hours worth of modeling. Not all in one sitting. I did break it up here and there, so you might see a couple moments where it, it jumps in the image a little bit, but rest assured I haven't left out any actual uh, any actual modeling work. Those, those are times that I just stepped away to, you know, attempt to have a life outside this project, uh, which sometimes is nice, sometimes... Sometimes you just wanna just wanna work on these things. It's been a really fun project. I uh, I started it last year in 2019. Uh, if you've been following my blog, uh, you may have seen some of the older posts or even all of them. If you're obsessed with the project, which you totally should be, Lord knows I am. And uh, so anyway, I started it in 2019, and after a while, I got bored, as I usually do with these sorts of projects, and stopped working on it. And then when COVID-19 hit, uh, eventually I was like, huh, it'd be kind of fun to, to work on this alongside some, some other completely 
unrelated projects that I've got going as well. Uh, here you can see that I'm, I'm adding a, uh, a material for the window. You can't see through it here, it's just giving kind of a, a faux reflection as a preview, but when it's fully rendered in cycles, it'll actually have a, a transparent and reflective sort of surface. Completing the tracery here, last few steps. Again, there's some intersecting geometry. I'm not worrying too much about it. And then now, I believe I'm gonna start working on these arches up here. Let's see if I actually do that, see if I remember. Yep, here we go. So I'm starting with those columns. These are, are decorative elements that are, again, borrowed from Durham Cathedral. Some parts of the scale are a little bit different. Some of the details are a little bit different. And um, yeah, so it's, it's not a, an exact one-to-one -one match but Durham does provide some, some useful references, especially since that's what the filmmakers were, were basing this off of. Um, they knew that they were gonna be using Durham Cathedral or had used Durham Cathedral as a filming location. They used the, the courtyard area for uh, several scenes in the first two films. And so in order for the, the main miniature that was used for all the visual effects to look, oh, you can see there's the Durham Cathedral blueprint that I'm working with a little bit, fading it in and out to, to compare. Yeah, it doesn't quite match for that part, and that's okay. But still useful reference. Uh, I'm still going to end up ultimately eyeballing a lot of this, although the, the base that I'm working on has been put together uh, using photogrammetry for reference. And you'll, you'll see me a little later in this video start turning that, that photogrammetry on and off so I can, can compare different elements. I'll try to point it out. Uh, here I'm getting the profile to spin for those arches. It's gonna have a little bit, you'll, you'll see here, getting the scale right, and there we start spinning it. And as you change the angle, you can see that it, it really has uh, kind of a cool fully dimensional effect. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I scale it a little bit more, try to get it to the right sort of depth, and then we spin it and we duplicate it to the other side. Oops, did it wrong, had the wrong center. Try it again. I make plenty of mistakes. Just try to catch all of them. And now we are going to check the way they intersect. Yep, looks pretty good. Make a few adjustments here. This is a very iterative process, this, this, whole, this whole project. It's just a lot of trying something, seeing if it looks right. If it doesn't, trying to figure out what I did wrong. Um, one thing you're not going to see much of in this video is me using blueprints. Those, as I said, are a very important part of my process. It's just that for the work that we're doing today, I don't happen to be needing them very much because I don't have, as I said, any elevations of this area other than the one of Durham. And I've already used the floor plan of the model that Warner Brothers has been kind enough to make publicly available. Uh, I've already used that to lay out the basic footprint of this area, but maybe if we do some more of these videos in the future, then you'll get to get to see me laying out some areas with the, the floor plans underneath. I've got them hidden at this point um, so that they don't clog up my my view or, or give me any more, um, you know, any more for my computer to worry about <laughs> in terms of performance. So we're duplicating these elements. There's, uh, what, eight or nine of them. I counted it all out as I was doing it to make sure I have the right numbers of them. And here, what am I doing here? I forget, oh, I'm, I'm cutting that section off using the knife tool so that then they'll, they'll intersect nicely. And, uh, and we won't have to worry about, yep, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, mirror it, cool. You can see I often hide pieces of the geometry and then, then bring them back. It can be very useful as well. Uh, using an array modifier here to quickly expand it out at regular intervals, um, easier than doing copy and paste, although that's also a very useful tool. Now I'm applying the modifier and getting rid of the stuff I don't need, moving it into place, and doing it precisely by using some, uh, some careful use of placing the object's origin and then scaling it to the 3D cursor set to, to scale only location. Here, I'm hiding some, some of the areas that I don't need, and ooh, there they are, hiding just beneath the surface. And then it's just a matter of stitching it all together in a way that is, that is accurate. Adding materials. I've got the main materials for this model already 
made, which is nice. Don't have to worry about those too often, although sometimes I do go back and rework them a little bit, or sometimes I have to, I have to create something new. We don't see any new materials being created in this video. A uh, similar challenge for these arches that we're going to do down at the bottom, except you saw me taking a closer look at those those windows that have a similar shape, and I'm thinking, hmm, but I can reuse part of that window. You know, work smarter, not harder. So save my work, froze Blender for a moment. Great, now we're back. And now I've duplicated an element, that element. Ooh, there's a little bit of photogrammetry there. That was what I was talking about. When you see those uh, more photographic looking, uh, but very messy bits of model show up, that's the photogrammetry. Uh, there I'm duplicating it to check the scale, duplicating that arch, looking through some of my other references. Just trying to make sure I do everything on the up and up. A lot of these things it's easier if you do them right the first time rather than doing it kind of right and then moving on to another area and then realizing that the kind of right assumptions that you made the first go around have now informed other assumptions that you've made and other estimations and before you know it you end up with these errors accumulating. I've, I've mentioned that in a few of my blog posts. It's something I've run into with other projects like this where I'm trying to reconstruct uh, uh, another, another person's work or a, another team's work uh, in 3D based off of uh, incomplete or less than ideal data sets, you know, partial blueprints or even no blueprints. Ooh, yep, another little freeze there. So anyway, I'm, I'm just using the basis, uh, the basics of, of that window that we, we looked at, that we duplicated, and now just making adjustments to it to get it closer to the, closer to those, those arch patterns that we see in the reference image in Photoshop to the left. I mentioned earlier these uh, these reference boards that I do in Photoshop. Uh, they're something I do just just for myself, so that I have quick, easy access to all the relevant reference images for whatever area I'm working on. I didn't do this at the very beginning with this project, but once my collection of of reference images started growing uh, so big that it was unwieldy to use, I realized, oh yeah, I should probably just start throwing together the images that I need for any given <laughs> section. So that's what I typically do now. You'll probably see me bounce back and forth with that uh, a number of times. And when I'm not recording video like this uh, for YouTube, usually I don't do a, a split screen sort of thing like this unless I need to really closely compare something. But I knew that since this was gonna be sped up, if I did my normal thing where I have the reference board uh, underneath and then I just switch windows back and forth, I knew that at five times normal speed, it's not gonna give you enough time to really look at what I'm looking at anyhow. It's just gonna be quick flashes back and forth <laughs> between programs. So I thought I'd make it a little bit easier on you by, uh, by splitting the screen and, and just having whatever image I'm currently using in the background there. So you're welcome. <laughs> Okay, those arches are looking pretty good. The proportions aren't quite right. So as I get them all centered here, you'll see me adjusting the proportions and the scale as needed to, to get them to fit. I think that's what I do now, if I remember correctly. Yep, getting the wall out of the way. There we go, adjusting the height. Scaling it down a little bit because, yeah, might be a little a little too wide. There we go, it's a little better. Another freeze, there we go. They're much more agonizing at one-fifth the speed when I'm actually working on it and get into a flow and then suddenly the computer just freezes up on me, but oh well. Not much to say here. Uh, these are elements that are also very similar to stuff from Durham Cathedral, and they are elements I'm going to be able to reuse in other parts of the castle, which is going to be really nice. Fine tuning. I've got it all stitched into the surrounding geometry. Adding some of the smaller decorative elements of these columns.
There we are. Getting real close now. So as you can see, it's a lot of just adjusting and adjusting and adjusting and making mistakes and fixing the mistakes and eventually getting to something that that works. That brings these columns about to finish. I'm gonna take a quick drink of water as we move on to the next chunk here, if I remember correctly. What am I gonna work on next? Hmm. Much better. Uh, oh yeah, here I think we're gonna be working on, yeah, these, these decorative elements that go outside the arches there. Again, using the spin tool, very, very useful. So then it can just create one cross section, one profile, and then rotate it around whatever center I need to. And again, I'm using the knife tool just to, to cut out the parts that I don't need. Here we go. Cut it all up. It's nice when these things meet at uh, at a simple angle like that, straight up and down or straight left to right. But when they meet at a more complicated angle like this one, end up having to use other techniques. I'm using the tiny CAD uh, add-on for Blender. It ships with Blender. You just have to turn it on in preferences. And that allows me to be a little bit quicker as I as I slice up those intersections. Still takes a while, especially for much more complicated pieces. All right, I'm looking at a whole bunch of stuff on my my reference board here. I don't remember exactly what I was looking for. Oh, yep, we're gonna start cutting these holes in the uh, in the side of this 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 column here. Um, it's a very very castle-like element. And so I'm creating the object to cut the hole using the Bool Tools add-on that comes with Blender. It's an, an easier way to work with Boolean modifiers. And then I'm, uh, I'm just duplicating that puppy, checking my reference, moving them along here. Not sure why I created these as separate objects rather than just duplicating the mesh within the same object. But it ends up being the same thing. There I rotated them around the center of that column, apply the modifier, delete those objects that I used to cut the holes, go in here. Here I'm adding some more of those, more of those lines, just there for decoration. One thing I should mention, uh, you can see in the image I currently have up on the left, uh, that's what it looked like in the Prisoner of Azkaban version of the castle, which is the one I'm currently building. Uh, that other image that I've been referring to a lot, uh, several of them actually, you'll see there's a, a big spire on top, doesn't look like that in other words. And that was added in, ooh, that was added in Half-Blood Prince, I believe. Ooh, I'm getting rusty. I'm going to have to double check that. It was added in, in one of the middle movies there uh, as part of the process that, that they, oop, photogrammetry. Checking my portions as we move on to the central tower. Checking multiple pieces of photogrammetry. Anyway, what was I saying? Um... I lost my train of thought. It'll come back to me when I watch this video after it's uploaded. <laughs> so again, photogrammetry, turning it on and off. Uh, a lot of the photogrammetry you're seeing here is from film frames, like that one is from Chamber of Secrets. Great sh shot moving down toward the greenhouses. There I'm moving it a little bit more into place. The, the, the scale and the proportions on the photogrammetry I've found tends to be more more precise locally than globally. So uh, I, I sometimes have to move the photogrammetry out, around a little bit so that it aligns with the particular area I'm working with. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it doesn't quite get precise enough to where 
or you can just leave it in one place the whole time. You'll also see that I duplicate at some point here one of the, the photogrammetry meshes, and I actually move it quite a bit, because uh, that duplicate I'm using for the, or I'm going to be using for the top of this, this central tower, which had its height changed, um, that change also occurred uh, in Half-Blood Prince. There it is. You can see I'm adjusting uh, to create two versions of it. One that's going to be the um, Half-Blood Prince height, because the photogrammetry is of the Half-Blood Prince version of the model, because it's from the, the model at Warner Brothers Studios, the studio tour. That's the one. So I've I've duplicated the photogrammetry and moved it up a little bit. Here I'm checking some of the other photogrammetry I've run. This is Meshroom, like mushroom but with an E because it creates meshes, 3D objects. And so I'm checking some of my old photogrammetry to see, oh, will this provide useful reference? This is a shot from Prisoner of Azkaban, really beautiful. Buckbeak is flying around the spires, which I'm not working on the spires of those bell towers right now, but they do have a lot of design elements in common, so can still provide useful reference. Ultimately, I decided not to use that bit of photogrammetry. Here I'm just checking a bunch of photos I've collected from all over the internet, trying to get a feel for what pieces of this I need to be careful about since I'm gonna eventually be creating um, all the different versions of this, not just the Prisoner of Azkaban version of the castle. So I do try to be a little, uh, little bit cognizant of which parts I'm gonna want to, uh, it's hard to put into words, but I, 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 I try to future-proof the model to some degree. If, if there's pieces where I'm like, okay, I, I, I need to cut this section away, but I know that the part I'm, I'm cutting away I'm going to need for a, an earlier or later version of the castle, I, I try to preserve that in some way, either using Boolean operations, uh, or sometimes I'll, I'll make duplicates of, of objects and, and hide them away in a little trash collection that I have uh, for stuff I'll, I might need just in case later on. Here I'm starting to add the octagonal uh, little turrets around the outside of the central tower. I started off with them square, and I thought, hmm, maybe I can, can bevel out the sides to get that octagon. It was a bad idea. <laughs> so here I create that octagon. Technically, it's, a, it's an eight-sided circle, according to Blender, because <laughs> anytime you create a, create a circle out of out of vertices like this, it's just actually going to be a polygon with a lot of, a lot of vertices. So there, I created a, an octagon and I stitched it together with the square, using the photogrammetry a lot now because I want to make sure I get the scale right. Again, it's not completely, totally precise down to the millimeter. It's just not possible with photogrammetry, especially with with the sorts of images I'm working from. But if you compare enough pieces of reference to each other, you kind of cross-check your work against all of them, you can get something that's pretty dang close to, pretty dang close to right. You can see there I'm referring to the bell towers again, that's the, that's one of the bell towers that I've got up in the reference image, because um, again, they, they have a lot of, a lot of design elements in common. Just have to be careful about the differences. Here I'm starting to create the main roof, which is also octagonal. It's an octagonal spire. It was created for the Prisoner of Azkaban. Prior to that, in the first two films, the central tower and the bell towers had much shallower um, candle snuffer style um, conical roofs, spires. But for Prisoner of Azkaban, they wanted a, a more gothic look to the castle. And so a lot of the, the shallower spires like these ended up becoming much steeper. And uh, in, in many cases like these, uh, or at least some cases, they were given a, a different, different footprint rather than circular. This one is an octagon. Yeah, octagonal is... 
most common way they went from, from my observations so far. You can see I'm duplicating a lot of elements. I've got some elements here that are, are uh, dynamically linked to each other. So when I make changes to one, it'll change the others. Very useful as I go through and try to make sure all the different, different bits match up with each other. Fortunately, there's a lot of symmetry here, so it's it's easy to make one part of it and then just duplicate it around like that. Yep, there it is. You can see, oop, I'm missing a face. I'm gonna go in there, add that face. Whew, much better. Okay, I'm checking my work to see how it looks from a distance, partly to check for accuracy, partly just because you get kind of zeroed in on one area and then it's cool to step back and see, oh yeah, this is how it fits into the, the thing as a whole. All right, now we're adding, adding the actual spire itself. And you'll see later on in this, uh, this time lapse that I actually make a mistake in here somehow. I don't remember exactly how I did it, but one of the times I was scaling, I scaled from the wrong center and ended up with things being a little, a little skewed. So I had to go back and fix it later in the video. You'll see that. Yeah, it's somewhere right in here. I still don't know exactly how I did it, but that's all right. Fixed it in the end. Here are the smaller spires on top of those turrets. They have a very similar shape, just a heck of a lot smaller. They do intersect with the main roof, and of course if I were building this for real, I would not want the uh, the turret roofs to go right through the, the main roof, but in this case, because I'm only focused on exteriors, I'm not going to worry about trying to trying to use lots of Boolean operations to, to add those together and, and make the inside all nice. No point. All right, checking more references here. As we continue, save my work, freeze Blender for a sec. We're about halfway through this video now. I've got a lot more work I need to do on these details on the central tower. For example, let's see what I work on next. I don't honestly remember. I have not rehearsed this. <laughs> I think I work on the small windows along the side. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm looking at. Now I'm looking at other parts of the castle to see, oh, can I reuse some of those windows? Because I remember there's a similar design elsewhere. It looks like it's the same size. Yep, I'm going to reuse it. Part of it, at least. So there, I've duplicated it. Gotten just down to one copy. And I've moved it to the appropriate collection so that I can stay semi-organized and I can turn different parts of the castle invisible as needed. And now we're going to move it into place, paying careful attention to how it fits in proportionally, using another array modifier to uh, get the duplicates there. And I can easily adjust the spacing to experiment and get it just so. You can see me doing that a little bit there. And that's looking, it's looking about right if I compare it to my different different references. This, by the way, is the section that got shortened when uh, when they shortened this uh, tower for Half-Blood Prince. Or, I'm sorry, um, Order of the Phoenix. So the number of windows, you can see there's three rows of windows on the left, um, up and going up and down, but I'm creating five rows of them here because again, I'm creating the taller pr uh, Prisoner of Azkaban version. So I'll have to shorten it when I go in later and create the, the version for the last few films. All right, modified the existing window asset, done some, some array modifiers. I can apply those here momentarily. I think here I realized that my actual glass was a little bit off, and then I thought, hmm, did I make that mistake in the, in the original area over on this other turret that I borrowed it from? And sure enough, yep, there's a little bit of a gap between the windows. 
I decided I'm not going to bother with it right now. Maybe I'll go back and fix it someday. But it looks fine in the renders. Who's going to know? Other than people who have stuck around for all 35-ish minutes of this video so far. Which, hey, good on you. All right, here I'm using another Boolean operation to cut away the actual holes in the walls so that I can set the windows back into the holes. There we are, because of course the windows are, are recessed. Here I'm just manually lining it up with the hole. There are ways of doing that that are, um, that are, that offer precision without you having to do it manually. But in a case like that, it's going to get the same result and a little bit faster if I just did it by hand. So I did it by hand. All right, we've got those windows in place. Those went pretty quickly. As we move up, I believe the next thing I work on are the, the smaller windows. Or, um, God, I'm forgetting the name for those. But those tiny gaps where... For example, in a real castle, archers might, might poke through and try to obliterate enemy combatants. So yeah, here I'm using the inset functionality to shrink it down, and I'm using the knife to give it a little bit of a peek. I'm trying to get the scale roughly right. So far it's not an actual hole, but it will be. I'm just checking all my reference, trying to make sure that I'm not going off of just one image because sometimes because of the angle or the type of camera that was used or the lighting or the resolution, you can end up with assumptions that are not quite right. So I try to always have multiple images of, of, of any given area so that I can be hopefully pretty accurate. There we are, giving it a little bit of that arch shape. I could go in and make it really finely curved and everything, but there's no point. There are really, really no point. <laughs> there I'm adding a bit of a slope to the bottom of it. Could have used Boolean operations for this. In this case I didn't. Shape is simple enough. I could just use inset. Either way works though. Here I remembered, oh! I never got rid of the uh, the actual faces that were inset there to create the windows. So even though the windows are set back into the wall, they just have more wall behind them, which looks funny when you render it. So <laughs> I went ahead and got rid of those there. Checking more references. Trying to get all the details to look just so. Apologize if there's any background noise. I, I'm not in any sort of nice studio or anything. <laughs> so uh, you might get a little bit of my chair creaking and whatnot. There we are, adding... Adding... We're not adding, but tweaking the scale a little bit. I realized some of these... Some of these bits are a little bit too... Too thick. Now I'm getting ready to add that arch-shaped louver structure. Um, we're again looking at the, the reference image. That louver is from the bell towers, not from the uh, the central tower we're working on. So the, the size of the louvers themselves is different. But the surrounding arches are the same design. Ooh! <laughs> As I'm watching this to, to record this voiceover, I'm realizing things I missed. Gotta gotta cut out some more uh, some more holes that I missed earlier. And here I'm remembering that I don't quite complete the tracery for this window. I forget the the horizontal horizontal slat. I'll have to go back and add that in after I record this. Maybe while it's uploading. All right, so we're creating those arched elements. I'm using that word a lot. Element, element, element. Strange word if you say it too many times. Here I'm creating that section where it angles back a little at the 
the bottom of the arch. There are so many different ways to tackle any of these modeling problems, and if you've used Blender for long enough, you're probably going to spot ways where you're like, why didn't he do it that way? And probably the reason is just that I didn't think of it. So <laughs> please <laughs> let me know if, if you see me doing something silly. I've been using Blender now since about, about I want to say 2006. I think that's when I started. Uh, so at the time of this recording in 2020, uh, been almost 14 years. But it's been on and off. And, uh, you know, there's always more to learn. And sometimes I, just, I know of a solution, but I just don't think of it in the moment. In this case, I'm doing a lot of stuff by hand, extruding some vertices, drawing some in. I'm only working on half of this archway at the moment because I know I'm going to be able to just mirror the other half and it'll, it'll look fine. Save my work, freeze Blender, get it back eventually. Hopefully, there it is. I'm uh, shearing some of those, some of those shapes. Not going super, super precise with those because I know that they're going to end up buried in other geometry anyway. And here we start getting the the peak of that that dormer shape up there. Filling in the faces as needed. That's starting to look pretty good. Of course, I don't have any of those complicated sections of the arches inside there, which uh, you're going to see me doing very shortly. Yeah, those spots in there. And at this point, I'm dreading it. I'm going, oh, this is going to be tough. So what do I do? I go ahead and cut the section out of the roof for the dormer instead. <laughs> when in doubt, procrastinate and work on something else. There, I've duplicated the cutout all around there. And I could have just not worried about those holes, except that uh, it's visible through the, the wall there if, if you don't. So here I actually did have to have to cut out the geometry. Here I'm creating the roof of the dormer itself. Extrusion wasn't behaving quite the way I expected it to. So I ended up eyeballing it a little bit. Some of those faces are not quite completely parallel. Sorry. Actually, I think my perfectionist side kicked in here and I decided, no, you know what? I'm going to use some edge sliding and I'm going to I'm going to get it all locked in and be perfectly parallel. Comes out to the same thing, but sometimes it feels a little better. You know, in these uncertain, unprecedented times, it's nice to have a little control. <clears throat> Which, by the way, if, if you're watching this during these COVID-19-y times uh, that I'm recording it in, I uh, hope that you and your loved ones are... are are well, relatively happy, relatively sane. Uh, yeah, crazy, crazy times we're living in, especially here in the States. That's all I have to say about that. All right, here I'm adding some of the, some of the more intricate spots here. I gotta carve out space for this column. So I'm doing that right now. This isn't intended to be a, a Blender tutorial, which is why I'm not going into great detail about all of my methods here. If you've been using Blender for a while, this will probably look pretty familiar to you. Uh, if not, there are a lot of really, really incredible resources out there on, on YouTube and beyond for learning this stuff. And I know that because I've been watching them <laughs> over the course of the last 14 years, and I continue to learn stuff from them. But, uh, but yeah, this isn't intended as a tutorial per se. If you have any, any questions where you see something and you're like, wait, how did he do that part? 
totally leave a comment and uh, and I'll either point you toward a, a relevant tutorial or if it's simple enough, I'll just explain it. Uh, but yeah, really this is this is just here to give you a, a glimpse into what this project looks like while I'm in between blog posts. Speaking of which, if you've stuck around for this long with only 15 minutes or so left, uh, clearly you're interested in this project, so if you haven't already visited my blog, which is hogwarts4d.home.blog, hogwarts4d, that's the number four, hogwarts4d.home.blog, uh, if you go there you can see all my progress on this project from the very beginning in, in 2019, and uh, hopefully a lot more future progress as well after I do this video. So you should definitely definitely subscribe to that blog as well as this channel so you can, can get all the latest updates because this is very much still a work in progress, still got a, a ways to go just on creating this initial version of the castle, which as I've said is Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, I chose that because it's a nice happy medium between the the later stages and, uh, and the earlier stages of the castle's development. I also had um, pretty ample reference, relatively speaking, more than I had for the, the first two films at least. So I thought it was a good place to start. And uh, and I have, have not regretted that decision. I think I think it was the right place for me to start. And it also is, is a design of the castle that I, I quite like. It has elements of, of the original castle design, um, but it also also uh, has has some bits that that stuck around all the way through to the the end of the series that were were not there in in the original so kind of a cool cool in between phase here i got some of the vertices messed up they weren't lining up the way i expected them to i'm still not really sure how that happened must have stopped paying attention for a moment so here i'm just fixing all that to get it all in line again Move this section so that it is attached appropriately to the wall. Using all the same sorts of techniques you've already seen earlier in the video. Very repetitive process. But each part of the castle also brings new challenges. Here I'm going to use TinyCAD again to stitch together the spots where this molding turns the corner. Easiest way I know how to do it for something like this. If you know an easier way to do it in Blender, definitely let me know. That's looking pretty good. Now this one, I'm gonna use the knife tool because it's just straight up vertical again, so that makes it a little easier. Don't have to use TinyCAD there. And now I'm gonna flip it, mirror that baby and uh, add in the face that's missing. You look at that. It's looking, uh, it's looking pretty good. Here I noticed some shading artifacts, and so I was checking to make sure they weren't anything that was going to actually show up in a final render. I decided they were not anything I needed to worry about. All right, about ten minutes left here. Uh, I'm not gonna. You're not gonna see me totally finish the central tower in this video. Uh, here I'm adding the tracery. Um, yeah, you're not going to see me totally finish the central tower. There's a couple of dormers uh, that I I decided to save for after I finished the video. Uh, my computer was getting really slow, and I thought, you know what, I'll just take a break, edit the video, upload it, and then I can can work on the rest of it. Especially since it's very repetitive. It's the same same exact techniques I'm using for for this right here, just a slightly different shape. I got a little bit lazy and inaccurate with some of the tracery here, but it's, again, it's so close that you'd never be able to see the difference just looking at it. Only I will know it's there, and you now. <laughs> By the way, this is what I was talking about where I, I forgot that that central horizontal bar of the tracery. Um, I was thinking about it as I was working on this, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to get that in there. But then you'll see I switched over to adding the louvers in, and I thought, okay, I'll add that that last bar after I do the louvers, and never got around to it. 
So do that after this video. Again, just tidying up the edges. Some of these edges I really could get away with not tidying up. So a little bit arbitrary sometimes what I choose to clean up and what I don't. Ultimately, I'm most concerned with getting a result that is accurate to where I can fly my camera around and, and have it give a, a very accurate view of what it would be like to actually roam around this this castle at, at full scale. There I'm adding the louvers that I mentioned, and I totally forget to add that last bit of the tracery in the middle. Oh well. Getting the angle right, scaling it a little bit, freeze blender again, and we're back. I add wood material to it. That's one that I happen to not have made generic in Eevee. That one actually gives you a, a preview of it. Doesn't seem to slow my computer down too much. So that's why you see some, some bits of the model that still appear brown instead of gray. Comparing all the different pieces. Yep, looking good. Let's duplicate it all the way around. Again, work smarter, not harder. No reason to create the same thing on all four sides, you know, one by one. It's a benefit to working digitally. Now I'm adding the little, little toppers, little, little finials on tops of the spires, which have a, a copper material that I created. And I found here that I could reuse uh, some of what I had already created for other finials on the Durham section but it did still need some modifications. So you see me scaling some, some stuff and, and adding some extra edge loops and, and moving things around to try to get it uh, more, more accurate to what we see in the reference images. A lot of different designs of the finials on this castle. Uh, there are a few that you see reused between different unrelated spires, but a lot of them are, are just different designs for each one which is, which is pretty cool but of course these four are all identical <laughs> okay this is where I discover that mistake that I mentioned where I I somehow got my my spire a little off center and so you'll see me have to have to redo the spire <laughs> bummer yeah it takes me a few moments here to figure out what exactly went wrong why things aren't quite centered and then you'll see me look at it from directly overhead and then then I'll see oh yeah those vertices are are not quite lining up right and I realized it was just gonna be easier to start over from scratch on the spire sometimes you gotta gotta bite the bullet and do that so that's what you'll see here we got a long freeze and now we're finally back oh nope frozen again this is where I started getting close to just calling it quits on the video. <laughs> but we still got a, another few moments here. Add the spire again. Same process as before. Get that little, little angle in there. This time scaled correctly so that things actually are symmetrical the way they're supposed to be. Check in my angles. Duplicate the finials, and this time it actually stays symmetrical, which is a really great sign. So we're good. Move those around. I gotta add one on the very top of, of the main spire, which is a very similar design. So you'll see I just scale it up and modify it a little bit. You also notice that I totally forgot to cut out the sections at the bottom of the main spire where the dormers are like we saw the first time. Uh, so I again had to go back in and do that after this video, but we get it done in the end. Fortunately, this is a very nonlinear process. That's looking pretty good. I'm feeling good about that at this point. Let's take a look at a, a render of the final product. Yeah, that looks like the central tower, right? <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Maybe we'll do some more of these in the future. Make sure to subscribe, check out the blog. We'll see you real soon.